This presentation gives some recaps of the reopening weekend for the National Civil Rights Museum. In 2013 and 2014, the National Civil Rights Museum underwent a $27.5 million renovation to further support its mission of education, information, and inspiration. The renovation, the museum's first since opening in 1991, was significant, adding more than 40 new films, oral histories, and interactive media to the museum's already robust collection of artifacts and exhibits. In addition, the museum's updated modern design reminds visitors of its change to keep pushing civil rights issues forward. Here we have a salute from Alpha Phi Alpha, the fraternity of Dr. King. For those who have visited the museum before, the renovation becomes apparent from the time one walks into the courtyard. Interactive displays greet you as you walk toward the museum's entrance.
Two words best describe this renovation, comprehensive and interactive. Previous visitors to the museum will be pleased to see how some of the original exhibits have been redone. Visitors enter a jail cell to hear audio of Dr. Martin Luther King reading a portion of his letter from a Birmingham jail while the text appears on the cell wall. A multimedia wall illustrates intense media coverage from around the world and shows pivotal moments and speeches during the campaign, closing with President John F. Kennedy calling for the passage of a civil rights bill. An interactive light box explains what African Americans were risking when they registered to vote, the safety of their families, their jobs, and their congregations. Visitors can listen to a phone conversation as President Lyndon Johnson and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. worked together to pass the Voting Rights Act. The focus of this weekend and renovation of the museum can be best summarized by the president of the National Civil Rights Museum, Beverly Robertson. Well, this is such an important day for the National Civil Rights Museum because on the site of a great crucifixion has been a great resurrection and twice over because we did that first in 1991, and now we have a new National Civil Rights Museum where we hear voices of everyday people, so many more than most people have ever known, and many that people have forgotten about. So this museum stands as a testament to those voices and those people and to the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr.